प्रभुसा मसीह का पवित्र सुसमाजा हमारे प्रभु ईसा मसीह की जय अध्याय नौ वाक्य एक से छ तक ईसा ने बारहोम को बुलाकर उन्हें सब अब्दुदोम पर सामर्थ्य तथा अधिकार दिया और रोगों को दूर करने की शक्ति प्रदान की तब ईसा ने उन्हें ईश्वर के राज्य का सुसमाचार सुनाने और बीमारों को चंगा करने भेजा उन्होंने उनसे कहा रास्ते के लिए कुछ भी ना ले जाओ ना लाठी ना जोली ना रोटी ना रुपया अपने लिए दो कुर्ते भी ना रखो जिस घर में ठहरने आ जाओ नगर से विदा होने तक वहीम रहो यदि लोग तुम्हारा स्वागत ना करें तो उनके नगर से निकलने पर उन्हें चेतावनी देने के लिए अपने पैरों की खोल जाड़ दो वे चले गए और समाचार सुनाते तथा लोगों को चंगा करते हुए गांव गांव घूमते रहे हमारे प्रभु ईसा मसीह के जय sisters and little brothers and little sisters the gospel passage we heard Luke chapter 6 verses 1 to Luke chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 quite uh, befitting to this occasion of worship on evangelization The gospel passage is Jesus is asking the disciples to go to evangelize and how to evangelize what all things to be taken when you go and what will be the response and how you should deal with the situation and we are having these three days of workshop on evangelization where we are taught how to be evangelizers what should we expect from evangelization now today is the feast of catherine of siena she was a very uneducated lady she did not know how to write and read probably but she became a saint and she has uh, written in the sense she dictated and others wrote for her even she has dictated to the pope how to go about how to lead the church though she was an illiterate lady because she had the experience of god in the letter of saint paul we read where saint paul asked the question Do you not know the spirit of the Lord is within you? And that spirit of the Lord is within each one of us. Romans chapter 8:31 we read Saint Paul is exclaiming If God is with us who is against us? If God is with us who is against us? So if you are going to be evangelizers you are all in formation there are some maybe 1 2 3 years some longer years 6 7 8 9 years like that but still you are in the formation and you are aspiring to become a religious sister or a religious brother or a priest ultimately you are aspiring to become an evangelizer a missionary the word missionary means 
to be sent with a mission. So you'll be sent with a mission to proclaim the good news. You are going to be primarily evangelized. As you know, every Christian is an evangelizer. By the very fact you have become the members of the mystical body of Christ through the sacrament of baptism, you are an evangelizer. You are called, you are appointed, and you are sent. You are called, you are appointed, and you are sent. And your mission is to proclaim the good news. There is nothing else. There are different ways and means of proclaiming the good news. By education ministry, by healing ministry, by social apostolate, by witness ministry. Ultimately, what is important is our witness ministry. Not simply proclaiming. You know, we have to preach in season and out of season. It is Francis de Sales once said, always preach, but if necessary, use words. Always preach, if necessary, use words. What does it mean? It means you have to preach by witness. And if necessary, only use words. By our life, the people should know who Christ is. That is the main ministry that you are taking up. So to be an evangelizer means we have to witness the, the beauty of Jesus' life by our lives. Then we will be able to say, like Saint Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, It's not I, but Christ lives in me. It's not I, but Christ lives in me. You and I are called to be another Christ. I say in France of Assisi, another Christ. When people see us, people should experience Christ in us. In second letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 15, verse Saint Paul exclaims, we have become the fragrance of God in Christ Jesus. The aroma, the sugandham. Second Corinthians chapter 2.15. So we are all called to be the aroma of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. People have to experience it. When you go to a campus where there is a lot of uh, jasmine flowers, flower or jasmine jar or jasmine plants with flowers we get the smell it's like that when we are the fragrance of God in Christ Jesus people will feel it people could experience that without telling that's called witness so in today's gospel when we analyze the gospel today, gospel of uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. When I read this passage, what came to me, came to my mind first was 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18 verse Saint Paul says the laborer is worthy of his wage the laborer is worthy of his wage so we are you know it's like a company a factory the owner of the factory hire persons for work and they enter into a contract. You work for me so many hours, I'll give you this much of pay every week or every day or every month. So you as seminarians and novices and formies are hired by Christ or by church in the name of Christ. 
to work for church and Christ. And you will be paid what? You will be paid nothing. You will be paid nothing. Even if you have higher degrees or lower degrees, you just uh, think of uh, a religious sister or a priest, a religious sister who has a doctorate in uh, any subject and she is a principal of a college, she may be getting one lakh rupees per month. Another sister has not studied anything, but she was always in the parlor. When the bell goes, she comes and opens the door and receives the guest. Maybe another sister is maybe taking care of the kitchen. But all these three sisters have got the same pay per month, maybe 200 rupees or 300 rupees. That's all. Pocket money. What I mean is there is an equality. So what is important is not the pay. Jesus says, laborer is worthy of his wage. What is the wage? It is not I who decide. It is decided by one who takes me, one who hires me for the work. He decides the wage, not I. I have no bargaining power there. I, I may have all qualities, all degrees, but my pay is decided by Christ, by the church. Because I don't work for pay. I work for Christ. Because I'm called for it. It is not a, as like a worker outside. It's a mission. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, where we read, Jesus called the disciples for a mission. And what is the mission? To be with him, to be sent out, and to drive out demons. What is the pay? I don't know. God decides the pay, not I. I will be taken care of. I'll be taken care of. It is not the pay that makes us happy. The moment when the pay makes us happy, then we are lost. We are no more missionaries. We are no more priests, no more religious. We are not uh, committed persons to Christ because I'm happy with the pay. No. Whether there is pay or no pay, when I say pay, means salary. So I don't, I don't mean that. I'm not for work. i not for. I don't work for the salary. I work for Christ because I'm called to work for Christ. So I have left everything behind to follow Christ. My pay, my salary is awaiting. You know, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 28 and 29. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. What is the pay for these birds and the lilies? God take care of them. You and I are called to work for Christ, to work for church, and God will take care of us. How beautiful all these plants are. Do they pay anything? No. They, are, they seek the glory of God. Use the opportunities and they grow. Use the opportunity. You, as in the, as for me, is, you are given ample opportunities to learn, to grow, to improve, to develop your skills and talents. Avail every opportunity and grow and do your best. God has called us not to do the best in the world, 
but do your best for the world that's all god has called you not to do the best in the world but your best for the world do we need to pray yes you have to pray but without prayer jesus knows your needs gospel of matthew chapter 6 verse 8 we read your father knows what you need before you ask him matthew chapter 6 verse 8 god knows everything i'll give you a small example the other day i went for a program in kerala i happened to visit a parish for a death anniversary somewhere in trichu and this particular parish one priest from northern india has gone for holidays he is 82 years almost 40 or more years priest in a diocese in northern india for almost 3 years now he is at home his bishop in northern india he is not taking care of him so this particular priest complained to me as a bishop after the function in the church bishop i am here for 3 years my bishop is not giving me food uh, medicine money not taking care of me so since it was the church i could not i could not even tell him i just heard that's all so me really i came out of the church and i came back after one day i rang up to the parish priest father swanso told me that he is not taking care of by the bishop so what you can do is you send a complaint letter to the cbci president the bishop of trichu and let me see what we can do that's all i did not pray for him i did not do anything as such i did not assure him that i'll help him i told the priest he sent a complaint to the cbci if i meet that particular bishop i can inquire about that all but i had in my mind this poor father worked for a particular diocese for 40 40 years and now he is not taken care of he is old he is sickly somehow at the mercy of his family members he is going on pulling on his life this was only i did i didn't do anything more but i had a desire in my mind this guy should be helped that's all to my surprise after two days of my calling and talking to the parish priest the parish priest rang up to me some three days ago uh, bishop there is a happy news a good news what is the good news two priests from the diocese came to inquire about him and the bishop is ready to pay the expense of his medicine and take this priest back to the diocese i did nothing but i only had the mind you know this fellow should be helped but that's what the we are matthew chapter 6 8 your father knows what you need before you ask him that priest also my talk prayed i do not know or he prayed so many times blind god my talk made use me as an instrument to facilitate so he is taken back to the diocese now or decided to take back the diocese so god is so generous god is so merciful god is so good but we have to do our best for the world not best in the world whatever we can the rest god will look after you know as we come to the gospel of today chapter 9 of uh, luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 6 gospel explains how to set out for a missionary journey there are six points the gospel presents before us the first point is jesus called the 12 the first point is accept the call accept the call 
The second point is the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. The second is to receive the power and authority. So we had to open our hearts. We have to empty our hearts so that we can receive the power and authority. And third, to dry out all demons and to cure diseases, then he sent them out. The third is to be ready to send out, a readiness to serve the church. And the fourth point, after saying to them, take nothing with you for the journey, Then he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God. The duty, the function of proclamation. And what to carry when you go for the function of a proclamation. Carry nothing and nothing extra. Take nothing with you for journey. No stick, no beggar's bag. No food, no money, not even an extra shirt. Go empty-handed. Because God takes care of our needs. And the next, he says, wherever people didn't welcome you, leave that town and shake the dust off your feet as a warning to them. In other words, welcome everyone and attach to no one. Welcome everyone and attach to no one. This is the methodology to become the evangelizer. Go. God is called to you. That is the assurance. We have this uh, call narrative in the Old Testament. When Jeremiah was called, he told, I am young, I am a boy. I don't know to speak. What the response of God? It's I, I have called you. I know you are a boy. But I have called you. I'm going to entrust the mission. You know, John Paul II, he was made the auxiliary bishop of Krakow in Poland when he was just 34 years old. Cardinal Wyszynski, the archbishop of Krakow, called him and told John Paul II. So he was Father John Paul, not Father John Paul, he was uh, Father uh, Wojtyla. Father Wojtyla, Pope has appointed you the auxiliary bishop of Krakow. His immediate response was, Your Eminence, I am a young priest, only 34 years old. Immediately, the Archbishop, Cardinal Wyszynski, told him, Holy Spirit, knows your age. Holy Spirit knows your age. You don't worry about your age. It is God who has called you. He will take care of you. When Isaiah was called, you are told, told, you know, I don't know to how to speak. The response is, God is responding. I touch your tongue and you will speak. You will speak what? I want to speak, not what you want to speak. So you, we are called to be the spokespersons of God. We are not called to speak what we need, what we wish, what God wants. That's called evangelizing. So you don't worry about our talents and skills. Whether you are a talented person, whether you are a skilled person, whether you are an educated person, 
whether you are an illiterate person, whether you are a handsome person, whether you are ugly looking, whether your family background is good, whether your family background is bad, doesn't bother. God has called you. Listen to his voice and respond to him optimistically. The rest God will look after. God has a plan. You received the call free of payment. Matthew 10 8. You received without payment. Give without payment. And you get no payment. But you will be looked after. The moment as a seminarian or a novice or a religious or a priest or a bishop, you build up around money. You think about money. You think about your payment. You are lost. You are lost. That is what happened to Judas. Judas was thinking about money. He was a treasurer, finance officer, procurator. He was carrying the bundle of money and he was counting money every day. Not once in the morning, but every hour counting money. So much is there, so much is there. So happy. You know we have a parable in the gospel. A man had a big harvest and then he collected everything in the barns and tells his souls, now we have so many years of grains. Eat, drink, make merry, enjoy life. Jesus asked, that particular night, if your soul is taken, whose will be what is in the barn? We have no answer. So as missionaries, we should not be money-minded. We should not be mending on our own skills and talents. You are called to do the service to the church. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 35, we read, It is more blessed to give than to receive. To give than to receive. What you get secondary, what you give, the priority. What you get is secondary, what you give is the priority. Then you'll be happy. Your happiness is in heaven. Where your treasure, there your heart be. If your treasure is in heaven, your heart will be in heaven and you'll be happy. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. God always loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. God loves a cheerful giver. You are called to be evangelizers, to be a giver, to give. We are all ready to give others at our convenience. When I have two shirts, I give one to the other. When I have only one, am I ready to give that to others? That is what Jesus is inviting us. To give completely, fully and totally for others. I offer myself. That is what exactly Jesus did. He gave himself as ransom for many. Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Outdo Honoring others, outdo loving others. In, when you hear in Malayalam, it is more sensible. Matulavere Behumani Kinadalam, Snehi Kinadalam, Munitanal Kuin. Be in the first to love others. You must compete to love others. But with a good intention. The moment when you love others with a bad intention, the loss. So Jesus says, you know. The moment when you look at a woman with an evil eye, 
you are committed adultery with her with a good intention love other romans chapter 12 verse 10 a missionary is called to love to give and to serve a missionary is called to give to love and to serve Luke chapter 6 verses 35 and 36 Serve others without expecting any reward Niskama karma Niskama karma That's our call That's what Jesus did But your things will be taken care of by the church by Christ by God The moment we have this around money around comforts around conveniences of life then we are lost so my dear fathers sisters seminarians and little sisters let's take this the evangelizer the workshop on evangelization is meant to make us an evangelizers and the qualities of evangelizer is that you received without payment you give without pain pain god is looking after the whole world so well so how much more he will look after us this is the attitude a missionary should develop in his life now you, you are in the beginning stage of your formation now your formation you should uh, orient it toward this for the very beginning of formation a free service for the church for christ for god your intention is to proclaim because jesus has called me to be with him and to send out he has called he has appointed and he will send you out give without payment because you received without payment is a great gift god has given us it is given in an earthen vessel the vocation is given in an earthen vessel so you have to give you have to protect it well unless you protect and how to protect it through prayer through word of god through sacraments and to be sincere let me tell you two important advice i received one as a seminarian first year before joining the seminary and second my my own father gave me the advice before i went to the new parish as a young priest 26 years old 30 years ago when i joined the seminary my brother priest elder brother priest he is 12 years older to me gave me this advice another priest told him give an advice to your younger brother he joined the seminary he said my brother told me he said in malayalam i said malayalam also eda seminary le nona parayirudu that's all be sincere don't say lie in the seminary be sincere that's my advice that's advice i got as a seminarian and my father before going to the first parish as the assistant parish priest he told me so so 38 years ago the first one 48 years ago i got that advice this is 38 years ago he told me mone സഹിക്കേണ്ടി വന്നാലും തോൽക്കേണ്ടി വന്നാലും സത്യം വിട്ട് ഒന്നും ചെയ്യരുത് ഈവൻ ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ടു ഫെയിൽ ഇൻ യുവർ ലൈഫ് ഓർ ടു സഫർ ഇൻ യുവർ ലൈഫ് ഡോൺ ഡു എനിതിങ് വിതൗട്ട് ട്രൂത്ത് ബി ഓൾവേസ് ട്രൂത്ത്ഫുൾ ഐ ബിൻ കീപ്പിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് അഡ്വൈസ് അൻഡ് ഇൻ ടുഡേ ആൻഡ് ഐ വിൽ കണ്ടിന്യൂ കീപ്പിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് അഡ്വൈസ് സോ ബോത്ത് മീൻസ് സെയിം ബി സിൻസിയർ be truthful be trustworthy jesus says you know saint john chapter 6 you know chapter 12 verse 
am the life i am the truth i am the way walk in that be truthful so dear my dear seminarians and little sisters let's take this message god has called you god has appointed you and god will send you be truthful and faithful to him mother teresa once said you know god wants us not to be successful but faithful that's all let's keep this prayer in our mind as we continue the celebration of this divine liturgy god bless you all